Hello and good evening, everybody. Welcome to yet another interesting session of Muskan, an initiative of Prabha Khetan Foundation and Education for All Trust, presented by Sri Cement Limited. Prabha Khetan Foundation is an organization based in Kolkata, founded by late Dr. Prabha Khetan, dedicated to socio-cultural welfare and humanitarian causes. The foundation's initiative, Muskan, aims at popularizing heritage literature and culture nationwide among children and young adults by weaving it into formal and informal education through various student activities. Some of the ways adopted to do this are cultural programs, storytelling sessions, theater, dance, music and art, which are organized via collaborations with our national and international associations and institutes, both Pan-India and Overseas Network of Schools, Educational and Art Institutions. Today we have amongst us Analina and Tamali from Think Arts. Think Arts is an arts organization founded 10 years back to facilitate high quality transformative arts events for children and young adults. Based in Kolkata, Think Arts has collaborated with over 75 partners across India and internationally to bring a diverse program of literary, visual art, dance, storytelling, and theater events to children and young people in several cities across India. In 2020, when everything was closed due to COVID-19, they started creating digital stories for children online. This piece, When the Colors Ran Away, that you will all watch today, was made by them and commissioned by the Vancouver International Children's Festival for their online festival in 2021. After you finish watching, they will share some activities that you can do inspired by the story. So do watch carefully. And as a reminder, it is there in the post that you are supposed to keep some paper, pencils and color pencils with you for the after the screening some activities that Tamali and Analina are going to present. So over to you, Analina and Tamali, and children, enjoy yourselves. Thank you so much for that lovely introduction. And um, once again, I'm Analina from Think Arts, and I'm here with my colleague, Tamali to share this digital story with you. Now, what this basically means is this is an animated uh, film, so to speak, that we will be sharing. And after we have screened it for you, we will be uh, taking you through some activities related to the film. So do watch it very, very carefully because it will all come back during the activities. And as uh, Ms. Rai already mentioned, uh, we at Think Arts have been working in this uh, sector for the last 10 years. And what we basically do is things like this, where we get, get to meet lovely children like you and bring to them films, theater performances, dance performances, literature festivals, and much, much more. So a big, big thank you to the Prabhakaitan Foundation from Think Arts for allowing us the opportunity to uh, talk to you children today. And hopefully you will all enjoy the film and uh, have fun doing the activities together. Do keep your papers, pencils, colors ready. Once the film is over, I will ask you to get them together and use them to your heart's content. Um, so without further ado, I will begin screening. Um, just a quick note, since there are so many of you, unfortunately, I'm not able to interact with every one of you, although I would have loved to do that on another day. So what we will do is once the screening is over, we will open the chat so you can share your answers there if you're comfortable writing on Zoom or otherwise you can also write on your notebooks or papers in front of you. So with that, I will screen the film and I will talk a little bit about what the uh, production, what the behind the scenes was like after and done. Hi everyone, I'm Kavya and I'm here to tell you a story about two boys and a whole lot of shapes and shades. The story is called When the Colors Ran Away 
and it's a story that begins in India. One day, Adi and Rohan were cycling home from school when they felt a sudden gust of wind. The wind blew out of nowhere, sending dust and sand spiralling into the air. It was so strong that it nearly pushed the two boys off their bicycles. Adi and Rohan hit the brakes and along with the dust, they saw hundreds of flyers sailing in the breeze. The boys snatched at the air, grabbing hold of the crinkliest, crumbliest pieces of paper they had ever seen. The boys were surprised to see blotches of colour hanging off the paper. The yellows blinked at them. The blues settled on their shoulders. And the reds stuck their tongues out and blew raspberries at them. But just as the boys tried to grab the colours, they leapt off the paper and ran away. Adi and Rohan unfurled the flyer and were delighted to read that the colours belonged to a painting that was housed in the big building made entirely of glass. The boys had always wanted to visit the big glass building and now that they had seen the dancing colours, they wanted to visit more than ever. They checked their pockets and when they realised that they didn't have any money, they decided to come up with a plan. They would put together a grand carnival with tons of attractions to raise the money. Okay, maybe not that many attractions. <laughs> 20 rupees to see the most ferocious beast in the world. 20 rupees to see the mighty Rohan jump higher than a jungle cat. 20 rupees to see the amazing Adi kick a football two streets away. The carnival went swimmingly and the boys came close to collecting all the money they needed. While Adi got ready to kick the last football across the street, Rohan was busy counting the money, ready to declare the carnival a grand success. When suddenly, crash! The amazing Adi had kicked the football two streets away and through Ravi uncle's window. The boys had to pay Ravi uncle all their money to fix it. They were heartbroken. The next day, the two cycled to school lethargically. They didn't feel like wishing anyone a good morning. And they didn't want to pay attention in art class. They plonked themselves right at the back of class and sighed. But then something wonderful happened. The teacher announced out of the blue that the entire class was going on a field trip to the big building made entirely of glass. They were going to see some paintings that had travelled all the way across the world and they were among a special few schools that would get to see the paintings for free. Adi and Rohan were very excited and so was the rest of the class. They told their classmates all about the colours that moved. They told their friends that the painting would be the most colourful thing in the world. More colourful than a rainbow. More beautiful than a sunset with shades of colours they'd never seen or heard of before. The two boys were the first to get to school the next day. They sat right in front of the bus and were the first to rush into the big glass building the minute the gates were opened. The boys marvelled at the building and then ran through the hallways, looking room after room for the painting with the dancing colours. They raced through the museum and after 10 minutes of searching frantically, they finally came to the painting that they had wanted to see the most. It was the biggest room in the entire building and it was the cleanest, whitest, brightest room the boys had ever been in. In the corner was a tiny window, a sleepy security guard at the entrance and right in the middle was the painting they had wanted to see all week. Adi and Rohan walked closer and closer to the painting. 
But when they were mere inches away, they noticed something strange. They looked at each other. This wasn't the painting they had seen on the flyer. This painting was dull and grey, with empty white patches everywhere. It was almost as though the colours ran away. Adi and Rohan were so busy looking at the painting that they did not hear the pitter-patter of tiny splatters behind them. Adi took a step back from the painting and began looking for clues. The walls were white as ever. The marble tiles on the floor were bland and plain. There was nothing unusual about the ceiling. Adi walked around in circles, looking for anything out of the ordinary. Meanwhile, Rohan stayed put and traced his fingers along the empty patches of the painting. He found a patch the shape of a triangle, a patch the shape of a rectangle, a patch the shape of a circle, and a patch that wasn't any shape at all. Achoo! Rohan looked at the painting and from the missing colours deduced that they were blue like the sky, red like the flowers, and yellow like the fields. He even found smaller patches of orange, green and violet. This doesn't make any sense, Rohan thought. Where could the colours have gone? Rohan joined Adi in looking for the colours and all at once they noticed a mosaic tile right in the centre of the room. The tile was made of all sorts of shapes, triangles, rectangles and circles. And it had the same colours that were missing from the painting. Adi and Rohan crouched next to the large mosaic tile and inspected it closely. That's strange, the two thought. They could have sworn that the patterns on the tiles winked at them. Adi and Rohan leaned closer to the tile. They were convinced that the shapes on the mosaic moved around. The two boys thought back to the day they had seen the flyers fall out of the sky. They had seen blotches of colour clinging onto the scraps of paper. Blotches of colour that looked a lot like the patterns on the tile. Adi was convinced the colours had left the painting and were hiding in the room. He moved his hand over the tile stealthily and then all at once, slam! He smacked his hand against the tile. Stop them! Adi cried. The colours, big and small, bright and dark, squares and squiggles, made a beeline for the window. But when they realised it was locked, they turned around, looked at the two boys and panicked. The colours ran around in circles, hopping and jumping, screaming and yelling. They ran across the room, flailing their arms, jumping over the walls, reaching to touch the ceiling. And the more they began to panic, the more they began to sweat. And the more they began to sweat, the more colour they left on the walls, the floor and the ceiling. Get them! Rohan yelled. The loud noise startled the colours so much that they all began running into each other. Reds ran into yellow and turned orange. Blues rushed into reds and turned purple. Yellows bumped into blues and turned green. There was even a lump of grey in the middle of the room resulting from all the colours running into each other. Pink patches on the pillars Blue blotches on the beams, dark green dripping off the doorway. There was red, violet, orange, green all over the place. Within minutes, the room was a complete mess. Adi and Rohan ran around the room like headless chickens. And then suddenly, they heard footsteps. Tap, 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 tap. They sounded like they were getting closer. Tap, 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 tap. They heard whispers along the corridor. Tap, 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 tap. 
They knew it was their teacher and the rest of their class. Adi and Rohan looked at the mess around them. Then they looked at each other. They did not know what to do. Look at the mess you've made! Miss Parvati was cross. The museum security was called and the boys were in lots of trouble, especially Adi, who had been caught red-handed. Literally. The trip to the museum was cut short and Adi's parents were called him to take him back home. This was the most trouble he'd been in his whole entire life. Rohan, Adi said, you have to get out of here. You have no colours on you. Miss Parvati will have no idea. Just tell her I did everything. Just as he was saying this, Miss Parvati was waking up the sleepy security guard. Rohan had to get Adi out of trouble. He jumped into action and began looking for the runaway colours. And then, one by one, he saw them sneaking out of the room, hitching a ride on people's clothes, blending into triangular-shaped earrings and hiding in people's hair and shoes. Rohan took out his notebook and began looking for clues. Ramesh, the security guard, said that the painting would be taken out of the glass case every day between 3 and 4 p.m. The floor cleaners swore that the painting blinked at them when the clock struck midnight. And the museum curator claimed that a blotch of paint had leapt onto her head and then jumped right off the moment she'd left the building after a long day's work. Rohan looked at his notebook and scratched his head. He thought about the moving shapes and about the day he'd seen the dancing colours on the falling flyers. It had been at the same time that the painting was taken out of the glass case. They've been leaving the painting since the day they've arrived. Rohan gasped. But no one knew where they went or what they were doing. Not the security guard, not the cleaners and not the museum curator. Rohan looked at Adi and then at the last colour sneaking out of the room. He had to solve the mystery of the runaway colours. It would be the only way that he could get Adi out of trouble. Rohan followed the colours down the busiest roads. He followed them across roofs and bridges, living rooms and gullies, all the while making sure that he wasn't seen by the colours. He walked and he walked until finally he saw the colours assemble in front of one of the most crowded neighbourhoods in the city. Rohan took a look around and found houses packed together like matchboxes on a busy shelf. Cycles, Rickshaws and stray dogs sailed down the streets like glaciers. Saris on the clotheslines flapped their wings like giant bats. And the sound of honking filled the air and the trees. Rohan was in a neighbourhood much like home. He watched the colours carefully and when he saw them march into a gully, he sprang to action. Rohan covered the entrance of the gully with his body, startling the colours and blocking their only way out. Got you at last, he said, thinking he'd finally trapped the colours. It happened so quickly, Rohan had no time to respond. The colours leaped and lunged and loped and looped de looped They were just too squirmy for him. He swished and he swung and he grabbed and he snatched, but... All his efforts were in vain. The colours slipped away with ease. Rohan was just too slow for them. And just as they were leaving, Rohan tried reasoning with them. He told them about all the trouble they had caused and about how his friend Adi was going to be punished because of them. Rohan was almost in tears. The colours listened to him carefully. The blues even shed a tear or two when they heard about all the trouble they'd caused. The colours looked like they finally understood. So, will you come back with me? Rohan asked. The colours inched closer to him. They wiped his tears and stroked his hair. 
Does this mean you're coming back? Rohan asked again. He was so sure the colours were going to come with him. But instead, they stuck their tongues out and made fun of him before running away. Rohan was livid. He wanted to grab hold of them and drag them back to the museum. But then, something amazing happened. He saw the colours line up, one after the other, and they began flinging themselves at the messy wall. At first, Rohan was concerned. But as the colours flung themselves at the wall, he realised what was happening. The colours were painting a picture for the entire neighbourhood to see. Rohan finally understood what was going on. The colours didn't want to be behind a glass box where only a select few people could see them. They wanted to be out in front of large crowds. They wanted to be seen by everybody. Rohan waited patiently for the colours to finish their painting. And when they were done, he asked them to return with him one last time. And this time, they agreed. Rohan and the colours hopped into buses, rushed down the sidewalks and crossed the busiest streets to make it back to the museum just in time. The colours hid in Rohan's clothes and ran back to the painting the moment he reached the room. By the time Adi's parents had reached, everything was back to normal. Except for the mess they had made. Adi's parents were disappointed. They shook their heads and they were about to scold Adi when Rohan stepped forward. Uncle, auntie, it wasn't just Adi. I made the mess too. I'm sorry, Rohan cried. We'll do whatever it takes to fix it. Mess? The curator looked perplexed. This is one of the finest pieces of art we've ever seen, she said. Adi and Rohan were confused, but not as confused as Adi's parents. The curator had hardly noticed the colours missing from the painting. And she wasn't the least bit bothered by the mess they'd made. In fact, the curator was quite pleased with it. Adi and Rohan took a step back and it slowly dawned on them that chasing the colours around the room had somehow resulted in a beautiful piece of art. Well, what do you call it? The curator asked. The boys looked at each other. When the colours ran away, they replied in unison. The museum was so happy with their new piece of art that they decided to pay Adi and Rohan a nice sum of money. The boys now had enough money to visit the big glass building every day for an entire year. And that's precisely what they did. Strange things happened whenever the boys visited the big building made of glass. The cleaners claimed that the shapes in the paintings danced when they heard their voices and the security guard swore that he had seen colours crawling along the corridors. But perhaps the strangest thing of all was that whenever the boys visited a painting, the colours from that painting would disappear, only to appear again a few hours later. And in the time that they were missing, a grand replica, indistinguishable from the original, would appear in a most unlikely part of the city. The end. So I unfortunately am not able to hear any of you, but I do want to see your faces and uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked the film that you just watched. Yes, I'm seeing a few thumbs up. That's very good to know. And I, I see a lot of enthusiastic thumbs ups as well. Uh, thank you so much. And now what we will do is we will do a few activities that will be related to the story, right? Um, I hope all of you have your colors, pages, and pencils ready. And if you can see now, you are able to write on the chat. So what you can, whenever I put up an activity, 
uh, you can share your response on the chat if that's something you're comfortable with or you can write on your notebooks, okay? Now, the first thing I want you to do is before we get into the activities proper, uh, thank you, Ivan, for sharing that the movie was amazing. Um, I do want to hear from you what you thought. So you can write your response on the chat. So if you liked it, if it was okay, if you maybe did not like it, that's also completely fine. Thank you for sharing your uh, responses. It's lovely to know that a lot of you that liked it. Some thought it was okay, which is fine. We all don't share the same opinion on the same thing, and that's perfectly fine. Um, and for those of you asking what we will be doing, I will be explaining to you in a bit. So I uh, hopefully all your questions will be answered. Um, you can sh stop sharing your responses now. We will get into the activity. We are doing a bit of drawing, a bit of writing. Um, so do start preparing for that and just get your materials ready if it's not. And I will now share the activity. So as I had mentioned earlier, I would be talking to you a little bit about the behind the scenes of the story that we just watched, right? So the painting that was uh, talked about in the story is called Autumn in France by Emily Carr. And it's a lovely landscape painting by a Canadian artist who was uh, alive when uh, none of us were born. She was born around 150 years back, which is a long, long time. And she made these lovely landscape paintings. And so one of these was picked up as the topic for the story that you just watched. Now, I hope all of you can see the screen. So you can see that there is the painting of the story given on my screen. What I would like for you to do is share three words that come to your mind when you look at the painting. These can be any three words. They can be adjectives. They can be nouns. They can be verbs. Any three words that immediately come to you when you see the painting, I would ask you to share on the chat. I'm getting some lovely words. Uh, if you are comfortable sharing in the chat box, you can do that. Uh, or you can also write it down on your notebook somewhere if that's more comfortable. I'm seeing a lot of colorful from all of you, which is perfectly understandable. Emily Carr was known to use a lot of these really bright, vibrant colors in her painting. So a lot of reds, a lot of greens, a lot of yellows. And if any of you are interested, you can always look, ask your grown-up to look up new paintings and share them with you. Now, what we will do is we will move on to the first activity. So as you remember from the story, there were a bunch of colors that had run away, right? I want to know what your favorite color is, where you see this color in nature, what this color makes you feel. And if that color comes to life, what would you do together? So pick one color. And tell me where you can find this color usually and what this color makes you feel. And for the last one, if that color came to life, what would you be doing with your favorite color? Okay, so if your favorite color is blue, what would you be doing with the color blue? If your favorite color is red, what would you be doing with uh, the color red? What activity would you choose to do with these interesting colors? So playing together is something one of you is saying, which, yes, I would love to play with colors like the ones we saw in the story. Some of you are sharing that you would like to um, play in the rain with your favorite color. That's a lovely activity to do. One of you is talking about uh, wanting to uh, 
curb global warming by spreading greenery with your favorite color green. That's a lovely thought. One of you is sharing that you want to paint together. That's also really interesting. I think that would be right up the colors alley as well. And some of you want to dance with your favorite color. That is also sounding like a very, very fun thing to do. So now I want you to take out your colors and find your favorite color from your crayons, your color pencils, oil paints, whatever you have in hand and draw out a scene where if your color goes on an adventure, what would that adventure look like? So you have to draw a painting showing your favorite color on an adventure. Okay. So now you can take out your uh, papers and it can be landscape or portrait. Somebody asked this question. So it doesn't matter how you paint it or using what kind of paints. All you have to do is draw a painting showing your favorite color going on an adventure. And what that adventure is, if it's an adventure in your own room, if it's an adventure in the big wide world, if it's an underwater adventure, all of that is okay. It's completely up to you. The sky is the limit. And I would like for you to share it with us, but we will tell you how after we are done with all the activities towards the end. So I will give you 15 minutes to start with, to start drawing. And once again, what you have to do is draw a painting showing your favorite color going on an adventure. And the kind of colors that you use, oil paints, crayons, color pencils, sketch pens, that is completely up to you. So think about what kind of an adventure your color would like to go on. Um, first, think about your favorite color. Think about an adventure that they would like to go on and then draw that adventure. And if you want to include yourself in the painting as well, please feel free to do so. And it can be a landscape painting, of course, that completely depends on you. So it can be a landscape, it can be a design, it can be a portrait, whatever you feel like is the adventure your color would like to go on, that would work. So the one of you is asking if you can only use one color and you have to pick one favorite color to go on an adventure. But if you need to use another color or other colors to draw out the adventure that they are going on, feel free to do so. So you can draw with any number of colors that you want, but one color has to be the main color in the painting. And for those of you who are raising hands, unfortunately, I'm not able to unmute you. If you have any questions, please send them along in the chat and I will try to catch it. And yes, you can use different shades of the same color. One of you is asking if they can scribble. You can scribble, but think about a color that you want to work with. And again, you can use a wax crayon. You can use a, an oil paint, a color pencil, sketch pen. Whichever color is available to you, whatever you have in front of you, that should work. And do not ask me if you can draw a color doing something. Whatever you want it to do, you can uh, draw in your painting. One of you is asking if it has to be an adventure. Yes, it does have to be an adventure. So the painting should be uh, showing your color going on an adventure of some kind. And you can use different colors to add to your painting, but there should be one main color that is clearly going on that adventure. Okay. And yes, you can make it with sketch pens as well. Oil pastels, sketch pens, all of them are okay. Watercolors, whatever kind of paint. Uh, that you have with you, 
they should be fine some of you are asking if you want to if you can do this with two colors um uh, i would ask you to try to stick to one but if your imagination is leading you to choose two colors and create an adventure using two then you can do that but i would ask you if you can to stick to one color and yes the adventure can be in any place that you'd like it to be it can be a park it can be a forest it can be under water uh, it can be in your room anywhere that you want you have maybe 10 more minutes to uh more or less finish up your drawing so i would ask you to start get started if you haven't already i will let you know how to send it for those of you who want to share it um one of you is asking if you can use three colors i think three colors is a lot let's stick stick to two at the most if you need to but one, one ideal and i will tell everyone how to share at the end of the session today for now there's only this one drawing and there will be more to come so what i will do i i'm going to just share with you on chat and that might help answer some of the questions that you are having some of you are asking once again if they can use two colors yes two at the most not more than two and where you can share will be uh sent on the chat at the end of the session so we do want to take a look at everything that you've drawn i do want to add more paintings but that depends on if you can finish um in the next 7 minutes so i hope all of you have started so that we can do the other activities as well so 7 more minutes to draw an adventure it doesn't have to be perfect right now but i do want you to start uh, the drawing at least and uh take it to a point where we can understand what's going on okay and we have the link uh, the email for where you can share your drawings after the session on the chat for anybody who was interested what i would ask those of you who finished to do is hold up your completed or almost completed or not that completed drawing on the screen so we can see it i see some of you are doing that that's really lovely and remember you have to draw your favorite color going on an adventure so it must be uh understandable what color it is and what adventure that they're going on when you're sharing it on the email you can also write a little bit about the drawing that you've made so what color you picked what the adventure is all of that you can share i am seeing some really lovely artworks here i am seeing a lot of blues uh, a few pinks and there's a red that's going on an adventure lots and lots of bright colors on the screen right now that's really lovely so 5 more minutes and then we will go to the next activity i am looking at the artworks that some of you are holding up and they are lovely to see um uh, and just like in the story that we just watched there's so many colors everywhere and so many different types of colors doing so many different things i'm seeing some of your colors are also looking like the colors in the story that's really nice as well if you've already completed one drawing and you want to at least write down or note down an idea for another drawing you can use this time to do that and just the next activity so 
in this story you may have seen that the colors are flying off to lots of different corners of the city to make new paintings i want you to answer in the chat or in the uh, in your notebooks whichever is more comfortable for you why do you think they went to these places uh, do you have any such places in your city and what sort of paintings would you like everyone in your city to see now this can be written on the chat or it can be written on your notebooks so why do we think that the colors ran away and uh, went to these other places of the city besides the big glass building so three questions because they did not want to be behind the museum uh behind the glass box they wanted to spread beauty all around the city thank you for sharing these lovely answers now do you have any place uh in the city where you think uh colors could run off to and make uh, new paintings is there any such place that comes to your mind and please know that there is no wrong or right answer here whatever you think um the wherever you think the colors could go you can share it and finally the question what sort of paintings would you like everyone in your city to see some of you have already shared uh, some very interesting answers do keep them coming i am really liking how all of you saw the same story but are uh, sharing such different responses i think that's the best part about something like an art piece where everyone has their own opinion and view of what they watched and that's the best part about it and i'm seeing so many different answers that are so much uh not the same which is really really interesting to see and some of you are sharing paintings from your imagination as well you can definitely do that it doesn't have to be an existing painting that you want everyone in your city to see and finally we'll go to the last activity for the day uh which is in the story the curator of the museum loved the art that was created by the colors running around now for those of you who don't know what a curator is a curator is somebody who decides what artwork should be part of an exhibition or what artwork should be part of the gallery display or a museum display and they usually pick a common topic for example uh paintings from canada or paintings from a certain time or paintings which were done in a particular style um so that's what a curator's job is now if you were a curator and you had a museum where you can pick what the exhibition should look like what would you exhibit there and why so if you had a museum to yourself and you could pick any artwork any type of artwork uh that was there in the exhibit what would you choose and what is the reason behind your choice the why is very important why would you choose to show that uh those artworks in your exhibit some of you want to show forest paintings some of you want to show mandalas landscapes marble paintings that's interesting sci-fi paintings space and flower theme paintings abstract art history art so again widely different answers from all of you which is the fun part 
one of you wants to show a painting with uh, colors who are alive and can run away uh, i hope we can see this happen sometime in the future this can't happen yet but with the way technology is working i'm sure at some point we will see colors that can move around and interact with us like they did with adi and rohan one of you would like to share 3d paintings it's quite interesting um so those asking how to share the painting that they had created um the link has been uh, the email has been given to you we can reshare it again once all the activities are done yes we are almost yes at the end of our session so so analina would you like to give any instructions before i say the end the program i think what i would ask all of you is whatever painting that you have done today whatever you have written on your notebooks do share it uh, at the email that's given in the chat uh, because we would love to see it uh, you know have a closer look we've only seen it uh, through your screen so far um so please please uh, share whatever you've done today and if you want to complete it if you want to add more to it feel free to do so and uh, if you want to also write a little story accompanying the painting you can also do that and share it alongside all right uh, with that uh, that brings my uh, brings activities to a close i hope all of you enjoyed uh, when the colors ran away and uh, had fun thinking about what adventures your colors could go on and i hope to see you again sometime in the future once again mm -hmm. thank you once again to the prabha khetan foundation for this lovely lovely evening thank you so much analina <clears throat> uh children please do send in your pictures and your writing because we are going to use some of them in our magazine uh because we always give a report on what uh events we are hosting so there's a little write up on the event like today's event also will be written and it will be shared in the magazine and then we can share your pictures your ideas of uh, what the colors did or whatever analina asked you all to do so do send in your pictures to the email id that has been shared with you uh on behalf of the foundation i would like to thank analina and tamali for this super cute session i would also like to thank our presenter shri cement limited and education for all trust last but not the least i would also like to thank our young listeners without their enthusiasm this session would not have been successful stay well and stay safe everybody and goodbye for now thank you once again